Okay, so this is uh, part two of series of videos about pulse induction metal detectors. So what you see here is basically the what is called the front end. And if you look at uh, this part from here to there, I went through this in the in the previous video. So what is new is what's to the right of the damping resistor. So this is the R2 and the two diodes is basically the clamping, the clamping circuit. And this is the preamp. This is the preamp. So it's just a non-inverting, non-inverting amplifier. So let's go through, let's go through the stuff. So again, this is the basic what's called the transmit circuit. This is the coil, the surge coil, and this is the damping resistor. And last time I went through this, but I didn't use a... Uh, this is a MOSFET. I didn't use a MOSFET. I just used a switch. Yeah, so this... Yeah, I explained what it is. So this is a P-channel power MOSFET. Uh, this is the source. This part is the source. This one is the drain, and this is called the gate here. Yeah. It's the gate. This is a P-channel, P-channel. So the source connects to the battery positive. So the source connects to the battery positive. And the transistor as a switch is off when the gate voltage, so this voltage at the gate, is equal to the battery plus. So if you pull down the voltage at the gate, then it becomes conductive. So the transistor is on. You could have used an N-channel MOSFET, no problem. The only problem is that you have to connect, in that case, you would have to connect the source to the ground. So it means that basically you would need to put the, the MOSFET at the bottom and all this stuff at the top. Okay. So... Here it's a P channel, but you could have used an N channel, no problem. Okay, so R2, D1, and D2 is a clamping circuit. So basically, at here the output, which is this is the output, the, the output is going to be between approximately minus 0.7 volt and 0.7 volt. So it's clamping the output. After that, you have what is called the preamp. So the pre for the preamp, I just use a in LT Spice what's called a universal op amp two, and with that model, the output voltage is limited to the the supply. I mean whatever you put on the rails. So here on the rails, I'm putting plus five on the positive and minus five on the negative. So my output is going to be limited to those values, and it's a non-inverting amplifier. The input is here, the output is here, the input is at the plus, and the gain is determined by the, the feedback resistor, which is R3, divided by this resistor, which is R4, and you add one. So that in this case, it's 101. If it was an inverting, it's just R3 or R4. Doesn't really matter, but here it is. So let's run this thing. And see what happens. Okay, so let's look at the, the pulse first. And I call it clock. So here I'm just having two pulses. I mean, in reality, you would have thousands of pulses. pulses. But here I'm just making it simpler a little bit. And so basically here, 10 volt is the battery voltage. So it means that during this, the transistor is going to be off. Here it's off, here it's off. It's only on when you pull down the gate voltage. So during those times here and those times there. So that's your pulse. Let's delete this one. Okay, so now um, let's see what the signal looks like right before we go into the clamping circuit. So here. Okay, so this this is exactly what it looks like 
when I did that first video. So you see the... So here there's, there's, uh, there's no current, here there's no current going into the coil. Here the coil gets energized, so the voltage across the coil, coil goes down. So here this is the V bat. And then what happens is that you switch off, you switch off the coil and you get the flyback voltage. And that flyback voltage okay, goes back to zero without oscillating. I mean, if you don't have the damping resistor, this thing is going to oscillate. So you put the damping resistor to go directly to zero, like this. And again, what we are interested is the voltage uh, around here. So if there's no metal, this is your voltage. If there is metal, what's going to happen is that uh, when you switch off the coil, uh, the magnetic field around the coil is going to collapse. And it's going to create eddy currents inside the metal that you are detecting. And that's going to create a counter magnetic field that's going to basically dampen that decay. That's, it's going to go against that, that uh, decay. So it's going to be a slower decay, if you will. So if there is a metal, the decay is going to look like this. It's going to go like this. Okay, so you, again, you're interested in the voltage here. Yes, so here, what we want is to amplify that signal. We want to amplify that, this signal around here. But the problem is this minus 72 volts here. That's way too much. It's going to destroy the, uh, the op-amp. So what we're going to do is that we're going to clamp it. We're going to clamp the, this part and that part to be between 0 0.7 and 0.7. So that's why... That's why you put those uh, diodes here. So now let's get rid of this one and let's look at the let's look at the voltage after the clamping circuit. So right here. So here, as you can see, it's been clamped between 0.7 and minus 0.7, but it's the same thing the decay is the same okay so now we are ready to amplify that signal so we are ready to amplify the signal so now the, the input is here and we're just going to go through the uh, the op amp and we want to look at the signal here or maybe i need to rerun sorry so this signal here so this is the output of the op amp. Okay, and uh, so so what happens is that uh, here it's gonna go to saturation, so it's gonna hit the five volt, and it's also gonna hit the minus five volt on the flyback, on the flyback. So this is the basically the charging of the coil, if you will. And this is the flyback. So you get this and again. We are interested in this part and now. Hopefully the voltage should be bigger than it was and you can. You can sample sample that voltage around here. And what you do with that sample voltage we're going to look at that in the next video but for today i think that's all we are going to do so again i'm just showing that circuit so a few notes in the, in in reality this the damping resistor should be much higher than seven ohms it should be around i don't know 400 500 so i don't know why it needs to be so low so that's one thing. The other thing is, I don't know if I mentioned it in the other video, but okay, so here the inductance is 300 micro which seems to be like a, the norm 
for a search coil, you need to add some parallel capacitance. Here I put one nano, and this is what caused the ringing. Yeah, if you don't put any parallel capacitance, you're not going to get any ringing. So to see the ringing, you need to put some parallel capacitance. Okay, so that's basically it. So next time we'll talk about what we are going to do with this uh, output output voltage here. This is going to be the job of the uh, what is called a sampling sampling integrator. So that's a bit more complicated than this one. So I'll see you around. Bye.